biggest positive of LLMs today is that they have a good ability to reason enabled by chain of thought prompting. If robots can be equipped with this very ability to reason, then we will be one step closer to intelligent robots. This ability to reason has been extended to vision tasks, thereby giving birth to vision language models or VLMs in short. Similar to LLMs, VLMs have gained open vocabulary visual recognition capability. This means that if we give an input image and some prompt, the model recognizes almost everything in the image and can give a description of this image. But robotics is one step ahead where the robot needs to recognize objects and then it needs to interact with these objects in its environment. To achieve interaction, the robot needs to be controlled. What will be nice is to extend the reasoning capability of vision language models to robot control and hence its actions. This leads to a new category of models called vision language action models and Robotics Transformer 2 is first of its kind. It's named RT2 because it builds on top of RT1. This simple animation shows how the vision language model is first trained with images and documents. The train model then integrates with RT1 to bring the intelligence from visual and text data, thereby giving birth to RT2. This integration of VLMs with action has led to robot intelligently interpreting the learned skills in new ways by reasoning about the images and language commands. For example, instructing the robot to put the strawberries in the correct bowl, the robot recognizes the strawberries, reasons which bowl is for the strawberries and puts it right there. Before we dive into the training details and model architecture, if you're interested in catching up with what is happening in the world of language models, vision models, 3D computer vision, or even graphics, please follow us on X, where we share daily updates about AI news and research from high impact research labs in the field. The handle is AI underscore bytes. Vision language models used in RT2 take as input one or more images along with text tokens and output text tokens. In order to do this, these models have to be really good at reasoning about the objects in the image. Now, two models that can clearly fit into this definition are Pali X and Palm E. Let's take the Pathways Language Model, or PALM, in short. PALM is a powerful model introduced in April 2022. The LLM has several language capabilities like language understanding, translation, reasoning about code completion, and many more. PALM E is a modified version of PALM where E stands for embodied. It was introduced by Google in March 2023. This massive 500 billion parameter model was primarily developed to be a model for robotics and to be also a generally capable vision language model. It can perform visual tasks such as describing images, detecting objects or classifying scenes. Additionally, it also is proficient at language tasks like solving math equations or even generating code. Pali, on the other hand, is a model that was developed to scale LLMs from one language to many, many languages. The model is trying to support over 100 languages and tuned to perform 
multilingually for multiple language image tasks such as visual question answering, image captioning, and scene text understanding. The scaling up of Pali was what led to Pali X, which is the second backbone model for RT2. The nature of these pre-trained vision language models to take images and text tokens as input and output text is absolutely fine. But to control robots, we need to speak a different language called the actions. And these actions are typically numbers for translation T in the X, Y, and Z direction and rotation R angles roll, pitch, and yaw in degrees. In order to bridge this gap, the obvious next step is robot action fine-tuning, the vision language models to control a robot. One way to tackle this problem could be to convert these action values into tokens, which the vision language models can then understand. For this, we need some form of interface between the robot's actions or the action values, which are the positional displacements x, y, z, combined with the rotation displacements roll, pitch, and yaw. For this, we discretize the displacement values into 256 bins. Now, each of these bins can then be mapped to tokens used by the tokenizer. The tokenizer can always use reserved set of tokens for these actions. For example, if we take an action with t value 0 0.1, minus 0 0.2, and 0, and the rotation values 10, 25, and minus 7 degrees, we first identify which bin these values belong to. The translation values from 0 to 0 0.1 can be bin 1. The values from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 can be bin 2. So once we have this discretization, we can then simply concatenate all the bin values into a long string separated by spaces. So we have six values corresponding to T and R. What we have just seen is one data point in the robotics data set. As the robot moves, the action constantly generates the position and rotation values, which get constantly converted into tokens. And these tokens get fed into vision language model, which now is a vision language action model that can understand actions. And a combination of the input image and the input prompt, along with the action outputs, leads to an action data set. This action data set is now mixed up with the fine tuning data set from the web. And the combined data set is used to train RT2. This way of combining the web scale data with robotics data is dubbed co-fine tuning. It seems to perform far better than just fine tuning with the action data set and also seems to generate more generalizable policies compared to training just with the action data set. Because the action data will be small compared to the web scale data, they do a weighted sampling so that there are many more action data points in comparison to the web scale data. They also impose an additional constraint on the model to output only the action tokens and not any other tokens like the standard language models because this is now a vision language action model and we only need action outputs from it. The size of the model trained for RT2 ranges from 5 billion parameters to 55 billion parameters. So in order to reach real-time performance, 
they had to leverage multi-TPU cloud services and run through a network. They also say that this solution can be easily scaled to multiple robots as they will all connect to the same cloud for compute. And this, in the future, we can have you know, multiple home robots with one cooking in the kitchen and other tidying up your bedroom, etc., etc. Moving on to the evaluations, they evaluate RT2 with 6,000 trajectories in varying conditions such as background and environments. And for the data set, they ran 13 robots over 17 months in an office kitchen environment with demonstrations of actions such as pick, open, place into, and objects such as 7-Up can and napkins, etc. The main question for evaluation is how well does the model generalize over unseen new objects, backgrounds, and environments. So they split the evaluation set into three categories and additionally split the categories into easy and hard. The results indicate that RT1 and RT2 perform similarly on seen tasks. The red bar corresponds to RT1 and the blue and green bars correspond to RT2. The generalization performance of RT2 are quite distinctive in the unseen cases, confirming that RT2 indeed uses the reasoning capability of the backbone LLM models. The next question in evaluation is about the emergent capabilities. By emergent, what we mean here is the degree to which the model can show new capabilities beyond those demonstrated during the training. Simply by making use of the knowledge coming from the LLM, these capabilities should emerge. A good example here is the command to put strawberries in the correct bowl. This not only needs understanding of what a strawberry and a bowl are, but also needs reasoning about where the strawberry needs to go. What we just explained is reasoning. Similarly, we can test the simple understanding where we say, move the pumpkin to number two, or move the pumpkin to number three, or it can be human recognition where we can move the coke to the person with the glass, or push the blue block to the ketchup or it could be the other way around. These actions are slightly more complicated and need to match the human level recognition. With all these categories of evaluation, RT2 shown in green and blue seems to outperform RT1 shown in red and VC1 shown in yellow, which is the other baseline for comparison. The third and last question is, how does the performance vary with changing the parameters or design choices? Because we never changed any of the parameters in the previous two evaluations. As mentioned before, there are no surprises here. Core fine tuning seems to do a far better job compared to simple fine tuning with just the action data. We can easily attribute this to the fact that the model forgets its reasoning capabilities if it's only fine-tuned on the actioning data. Last but not the least, does RT2 exhibit any signs of chain of thought reasoning that is quite prevalent in vision language models? For this, they simply augment the data to include a plan step before the action step so that the robot now expresses its plan to show its reasoning and then executes its action. By fine-tuning with this data, given a command, the model seems to generate both the plan 
and the action tokens, thereby becoming more explicit about how it reasons about the given situation. Though all this is exciting, it's definitely not without limitations. The biggest limitation is that the robot is unable to acquire new motions. So if you ask the robot to do a moonwalk, good luck with it. Even if it can reason about moonwalk, it will definitely not able to reproduce the motion of a moonwalk. This opens up new directions of research, such as learning skills by watching videos of humans. The last but a known limitation is that these VLA models, being derived from LLMs, have a very high computation cost and it's quite challenging to run them in real time. But we always have techniques like quantization and distillation to reduce the size of these models and the computation cost. So let's wait and see what these models get to in the future. Until then, I'm signing off and I will see you in my next. Take care.